Hello friends, we are already starting the third lesson on developing smart contracts on TAC. Today we will take a closer to look at the TAC language syntax. This will be the first part about data types in TAC, so let's get started. I've already created the project. Let's go to the contract tab. The first data type is integer. Of course, uh, we partially got acquainted with integer in the previous lesson when we created the counter. But now we will go into more detail. Globally, numbers intact are divided into two types, integer and unsigned integer. Unsigned integer means that this number can only be zero or positive. Integer can be both positive and negative. The main feature of numbers in tone is that they cannot be flawed. If you already have experience in developing smart contracts in Solidity, then the story will be familiar to you. The fact is that fractions are not used for large numbers because they can behave unpredictably. And since we quite often work with money in smart contracts, we need maximum accuracy. That's why we only work with all numbers here. Next, after we have indicated whether the number is an integer or an unsigned integer, we need to specify how much memory it will occupy in the blockchain. To do this, after the word int, we need to write the number of bits. The maximum number of bits for an integer in the Tone blockchain can be 257. This is an extremely huge number. The maximum number of bits for an unsigned integer is 256. This is a range from 0 to this value, as you might guess. But as you probably already know, storing data in a smart contract costs money. And the more memory you allocate for storage, the more you will pay for storage rent. For example, storing the number 1000 in variable int 257 will cost 0.84 ton coin per year. But if you store exactly the same number in the variable int 32, it will already cost 0,023 ton coin per year. So as blockchain developers, we need to keep such things in mind because in this case code optimization directly affects money. The bit widths for numbers uh, will be as follows. We can initialize variables either immediately upon declaration or in the init method. Also, take note that we can initialize numbers in hexadecimal format or base 16. We have mathematical operations that can raise numbers uh, to a power as well. Observant viewers may have noticed a type called coins. Coins, as you might guess, is used to record the balance of ton coins and other tokens. In line 24 you can see an example of how to work with balances in smart contracts. As I said at the beginning, in tone there are no fractions. All numbers are integers. This means we need to come up with a way to denote fractional parts of the balance. And the solution is simple. We just work with the smallest part of the currency. If we were working with dollars, we would use cents for calculations. So if you wanted to specify $1.23 in a smart contract, we would use this notation, because there are two zeros after the dollar, but in the blockchain the number of zeros after the old ton coin is 9. So we'll be using a number like this for calculations. Another important point with variables in tone is that they must be initialized either at declaration or in the init method. I'll initialize my remaining variables now. All these variables that I'm creating will be writing in the smart contract storage and I'll have to pay gas fees for them. However, there are other types of variables, temporary variables. 
The next set of variables are temporary. They will only exist within the scope of the receive method. That is, when our contract is executing some logic, these variables will be created and then deleted. They won't be stored in the smart contract storage. They will not consume a commission. So here the only thing there will be commission for is some logic with their calculations, but not for storage. So how we can work with our variables? Intact the classic operators for working with numbers, multiplication, addition, obtaining the remainder of division, and division. Division intact will always be rounded, that is, if we perform such an operation, the result will always be all number, rounded down. There are also a bitwise operation intact. Methods for obtaining the smallest number, maximum, and modulus. Naturally, in tone we can compare numbers greater, less or equal to in the classic ways. Also, the mathematics in tone is safe by default. That is, for example, for our calculations on line 33, will lead to an overflow and will simply return an error. Such an operation will not pass. However, at initializing, everything on the right side is automatically reduced to the largest possible number, namely int 250. And the error occurs only at the moment of trying to initialize the result, which may be greater than the variable can store. Okay, that's it for now with integer. Let's move on to the next type, namely string. For this, I'll create a new contract using npx, blueprint, create, and then type uh, the contract name strings. Strings are declarated using the keyword string. Intact, there is a possibility to add unicodes to strings. However, it's not possible to transfer a string to a new line. There is also the possibility to convert numbers to strings. You can also convert numbers uh, to strings uh, using float. And you can convert coins to a human readable string as well. Another important note is that strings intact, like in uh, many programming languages, are immutable, meaning they cannot be modified. You can only create a new string. Therefore, if you have some large string concatenation functionality, there is a special type for this called string builder. A string builder is very gas efficient when concatenating strings because it is mutable, meaning it can be modified. This is done using the append method. And after all, we can simply save our result to a variable of type string. The next data type is the address type. To store an address in the contract, 254 bits are used. And to store thousands of addresses in the contract, we would have to pay about 0, 0,1 each 9 ton coins per year. An address is declared as follows. We use the address method and then put uh, the address in string form. I have already copied the addresses in advance, the address of the Tone Foundation wallet. As you may remember from the first lesson, wallets in the Tone have three types. Bounceable, the same wallet address but already in the non-bounceable format, and the third representation of the same wallet, but already throw the new address method. It takes two arguments. The first is identifier of the work chain in which we work. We are currently working only with work chain number zero and then the full address format. I have already copied it in advance. Let's just initialize it in the init method. And if you wanted to compare these addresses with each other, 
we would get a true value because under the hood all of this would be converted to the same address. Now I will create three more address variables and with addresses we have two more methods. The first is getting the address of our smart contract using the my address method and the sender method which allows you to get the address of the transaction sender. There is also the possibility to create a zero address. The next data type is boolean. This is the cheapest data type and to store a thousand boolean variables we would pay only 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.00075 ton coins per year. The boolean variable is declared using the word bool and there are no surprises here, there is only true and false. Booleans can be converted to the opposite value using a negative sign and they are compared with each other in the usual way. We have now gone through the basic data types, now let's talk a bit about constants. Constants, as you might guess, declare it and initialize it once and after that they cannot be changed. The main difference between a constant and a variable is that it's calculated once at the moment of contract deployment and it doesn't take up storage. It is part of the contract code. However, we can read constants from the contract in the same way as variables. An interesting feature of constants is that they can be declared globally above the contract and such constant uh, will be visible everywhere. We can put it in our getter and name it some getter. This approach can be used if you want to bring some constants to a global level. That will be used in several contracts. Thus our variable global const will be also visible. Ok, finally, I want to talk a little about getter functions. As I mentioned earlier, getter functions are very good because they allow us to interact with our smart contracts for free. We can read their storage and to get the types of data we need. We indicate the type that this getter will return at the end of each getter. These contract methods are free because miners do not process these calls. Moreover, in addition to reading, a getter can also perform some logic. For example, addition, subtraction or any other large mathematical operations and any such actions will be absolutely free because they do not require a gas operation. But there is one nuance with getters. The fact is that we can only call them off-chain from the side of our client. This can be our application, website, anything that is outside of blockchain. This means that smart contract number one cannot read smart contract number two through its getters in turn. It doesn't work like that. The only way for smart contracts to interact with each other is to send each other messages and you can pass data, money, any information, data from storage in these messages and in the next lesson we will learn how to work with this. That's all, thank you for your attention and see you soon!